بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ونولا. So the last speaker before me spoke about دعوة. And he said something which caught my attention, which is the importance of focusing on the efforts of the da'wa and not the results. Because, of course, as we know, only Allah can guide. No matter, how, no matter what effort we do to call people to the truth of la ilaha illallah, only Allah can guide. Hence why we only focus on the effort and not the results. That being said, I do want to just spend a few minutes speaking about what the res results have been. Alhamdulillah, as we all have seen, there has been a very high rise of conversions to Islam here in, the Ameri here in America. In this convention alone, we have had numerous shahadas in the past couple days. Where I'm from, Dallas, Texas, we had shahadas practically every single night during the month of Ramadan, masha'Allah. So we are seeing a high rise of those who are accepting Islam and accepting the truth of la ilaha illallah. All from varying backgrounds. All from diverse cultural, ethnic, and economic backgrounds. But one important point, and one important question that we need to ask ourselves as their new family, their new family of 1.8 billion brothers and sisters, is do we have the same type of enthusiasm or attitude for each and every person that accepts Islam? And so what do I mean by that? So as I said before, there are many who were accepting Islam from varying economic backgrounds. There are those who are on the height of social status who are accepting Islam, such as athletes, celebrities, those who are professionals, and have gotten a high degree of enthusiasm from the Muslim community. Even to the point where certain people of influence who accepted Islam, due to their, them being an influencer or celebrity, are even seen by some as a guidance as a mentor of Islam, even though they just recently accepted the religion. They are put on this pedestal due to that socioeconomic status. However, what we need to ask ourselves is, is that level of enthusiasm, one, is it appropriate? But number two, which is really what I'll focus on for these next few minutes that I have, which is, do we have this level of enthusiasm for the convert who may be on the bottom of the social spectrum? There are studies that show that the number one religion that people are converting to while incarcerated is Islam. A vast number of new Muslim brothers and sisters are those who come from the prisons, those who were incarcerated. There are in my few years, I have worked with Embrace. I have worked with a variety of different new Muslim individuals, some of whom were even homeless, that did not have a single penny to their name. When these converts with this, these types of backgrounds come to our masjids, are they given the same level of enthusiasm as those converts who may be coming from a level of influence or a level of high professionalism. And what we see is those individuals who accept Islam and have that background of either being low economic status or having a background of being incarcerated, they are seen with suspicion, with eyebrow raising, even questioning why would they accept Islam in the position that they're in. And this mentality or this idea or this emotional 
desire to turn to those who have this level of influence, prioritizing those who have a level of influence over those who are on the lower spectrum is a natural human emotion. We know that even the Prophet Sallallahu while during a time where he was speaking with very high profile individuals of Mecca, of Islam, about Islam, we know of the story of the blind man that came to ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to teach him some Quran. Ibn Umm Maktoum, radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not rude with this, with this man. He did not reprimand him, he did not tell him, go away. But he was speaking to high influential individuals who could really help take important strides in influencing the overall community to accept Islam. And so the Prophet ﷺ simply frowned and turned his attention to those who he was speaking to at the time. He was not rude, he was not mean, but due to the level of influence of the individuals whom he was speaking to and their potential in helping to spread the word of Islam in his community, he prioritized discussing with them at that particular moment. And when that happened, we know that Allah SWT actually reprimanded the Prophet in Surah Al Abasa, the chapter of frowning. Abasa wa tawalla. He frowned and he turned away. So, of course, if even he, alayhi salat wa salam, is susceptible to falling into the clout trap, as we, as we as this, as this style is called, converse with clout just due to having the purest of intentions of wanting to prioritize those who can help the greater community overall due to their influence, Allah SWT had to put things into perspective. This blind man, this person who was considered the lowest of the low in terms of socioeconomic status, was much more valuable to Allah than the non-Muslim individual that the, law, that the Prophet was speaking to despite their high level status. And so when we talk about converts who accept Islam and are on that low socioeconomic spectrum like the blind man, we need to ask ourselves why are we not prioritizing them as well as those who are on the higher socioeconomic status? My, the previous speaker spoke about Bilal, may Allah be pleased with him. One of the most prominent figures in Islamic history, who is the first ever muwaddan of the Kaaba, someone whom we all have a lot of love and respect for, was an Abyssinian slave. A slave at the lowest of the low of the societal spectrum. We need to ask ourselves, if he accepted Islam today, someone at that level, would he be received with the same level of enthusiasm and passion and love that we have for him today? Malcolm X, one of the most, if not the most influential American Muslim voice in US history, the one whom we love and revere and always speak about, was incarcerated, had a criminal background, and also was on the lower economic spectrum. He's now someone whom we love and revere, but we need to ask ourselves, if Malcolm X accepted Islam today with that same type of baggage, so to speak, that he had back then, would, we, would he be received with the same level of love and enthusiasm and passion as we have for him now? Why is this important? This is important, brothers and sisters, is it because every single one of us has a role to play in this ummah. Every single one of us is an ambassador of this beloved religion, this beloved deen of ours, Islam. And every single one of us has the potential to help reshape the perspective of Islam in America, to help show our non-Muslim brothers and sisters in humanity, this religion is a religion for 
everybody, regardless of where you're from, regardless of what your background is. And we need every single individual, regardless of their socioeconomic, cultural, ethical background, to be a part of that mission. And so we need to have the level of enthusiasm that we have for some of our professional athletes who accepted Islam. We need to have that same level of enthusiasm for the homeless brother or the homeless sister that accepts Islam. That is part of the sunnah of the Prophet and it is a means for us to benefit our community altogether. Jazakum Allah khairan wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.